Good evening, everybody. Welcome to week two. We're going to be covering two chapters tonight. Um, the law of process and, sorry to be moving on me, and the law of navigation. Um, so, so good. But I wanted to start out with um, a word picture that I think will um, will be well, not such a word picture, uh, something that encouraged me recently that has to do with the law of process and that I think will encourage you as well. Recently, there was um, a father-son camp here in Oakland and we were privileged to watch a gentleman, I believe his name was Lou Wallace, um, and he has an organization, Sermon on the Mount, and basically they took a horse from untrained never ridden to walking, trotting, and cantering um, before us in, I don't know, an hour and a half, two hours. It went so fast. And watching the process was amazing. And the lessons and the applications um, were incredible. This application that you, you saw, um, as they were walking through this this process um, and something that I got from that that really encouraged me um, that I think will encourage you to um, as he was taking the horse through each of these little steps little teeny tiny steps to move the horse successfully from running around the pen ignoring the trainer to having this man on its back accepting him willingly um, happily, um, a series of, of little tiny steps, but he said, you know, we're setting the horse up to succeed. And he said, God is setting us up to succeed. Um, God is the master trainer, so gentle, so patient, so kind, and he knows what we need. And he knows each step to get us to where we need to be to succeed at the work that he's given to us. And it was so beautifully illustrated as wow. this man had taken this blanket and rubbed it on the horse on each side and then set it on its back. Eventually they got the saddle on and before he mounted the horse, first he jumped up and down beside the horse so that wouldn't scare the horse. Then he's slapping the horse on the saddle um, until the horse got over its fear of, of that sound so that when we put weight on and sat down and made a noise in the saddle, the horse would not be scared. Um, then he would get up on the stirrup and put his weight on for just a second to take it off. Little tiny steps to move the horse into a place where the horse was going to be able to succeed. And it just reminded me um, of Plexus and so much of life where um, the Lord is moving us just a little bit out of our comfort zones, a little bit out of our comfort zones and preparing us for the next thing. And as we're talking about the law of the process, some of you um, are leaders, you have a, a good sized team, you've been doing this for a while. Some of you are at the very beginning of your journey um, and maybe it's really slow. <laughs> maybe it's really hard and overwhelming. Um, I just want to encourage you, do not despise the day of small beginnings. Whatever you're experiencing now, whether it's just you, yourself, learning the basics, or you're feeling a little overwhelmed, um, learning so many new things, dealing with fears, whether you're a little further along and you're dealing um, with how to help your team and bigger issues, whatever you're experiencing now is part of that process of becoming a leader. Um, these are the things that are going to enable you in the future to be a good leader. The fears that you're facing are going to give you um, the authority and the boldness and um, the empathy to speak to teammates down the road when they're dealing with the same types of fears. Um, the lessons that you learn, your successes, um, your goals that you miss, all of these things are part of your process of learning and growing and these are things that you will be drawing on things that are preparing you for things in the future that you may not even know about um, 
this whole this whole plexus journey that you're on this may simply be a tool that god is using to prepare you for something entirely different we don't know but that was the other thing that stood out to me the horse had no idea what all of this flag waving and snapping and and all of these these funny things were about where it was going um, but the trainer knew he knew exactly what the horse needed to make it to the next step and the lord knows what he's preparing us for and what he's putting in our lives now giving us opportunities to trust him for opportunities to look to him for is exactly what we're going to need farther down the road so that <laughs> just went i yeah. couldn't get that out of my mind as we were working on the law process make sure to mute yourselves as you pop in here um i wish i had a background mute because i know <laughs> it's bedtime and people are uh, people are loud um some things that stood out to me from this chapter um, I love the quote in my book. I've got the, the workbook. I know there's some different versions out there, so we'll just tag along together as best we can. But for me, at the page bottom, uh, the bottom of page 29, it says, it is the capacity to develop and improve their skills that distinguishes leaders from their followers. Um, leaders aren't, aren't born, they're not more special than everybody else they're not necessarily smarter than everybody else um, it's just the ability to develop skills and to improve on skills which means we don't come to the table with our skills all developed and, and ready to go there's room for growth and what we really need most in order to be a leader is that willingness to develop that willingness to improve and that willingness to stick with it through the long haul because leadership is not one of those things that gets developed overnight it is a process um, on the next page page 30 it's the process <laughs> it's an on learning process is an ongoing result of self-discipline and perseverance so four phases of leadership growth um, phase one don't know what I don't know. <laughs> a lot of people are here. They don't have any idea what opportunities they're passing up when they don't learn to lead because leadership is influence, right? It's just influence. Um, and everybody has times when they have a desire to influence. They see a need where someone um, <laughs> needs some good influence, things like that. But I think most of us start here not knowing what we need. Um, and that's encouraging because that means that everybody on this call has probably already moved to phase two. I don't know what I don't, or I know what I don't know. It's that area of learning that you need to learn, that there is room to develop, um, and that hunger. Um, he says, this is the bottom of page 30 for me. Um, when we realize that we need to learn how to lead, that's when it's possible for the process to start. Um, so I applaud all of you that made it onto this call that are going to be listening to this recording um, because you're hungry to learn. And that means you're already on step two, if, if not farther. Phase three, I grow and I know and it starts to show. You start implementing leadership skills. You start learning um, to be a good influence. Um, he gives a, a story in here um, on page 31 about a young man who was hungry to learn. And he said to him, you can be a great leader, but it won't happen a day. Start paying the price now. And that's what we're doing tonight. We're, and through this book study, we're starting to to become aware of leadership, aware of where we're at, aware of where we need to grow, um, so that we can be in that process, so that we will be in a different place a year from now. And phase four, I know um, some books might have five phases. This version has four. I simply go because of what I know. Um, in phase three, you can be a pretty effective leader, but you have to think about every single move you, you make. It's not automatic. When you get to the last level, 
your ability to lead becomes almost automatic and reflexive. And that's when the payoff is larger than life. So there was a little evaluation section, which I thought was very helpful myself. And then on my book, on page 35, I have a uh, section that's called Discuss. I think in some other books, it's called Apply. Does anyone have the Apply version? Okay, a couple of applies. So maybe have that. I want to take um, a couple of these questions and um, open it up to, to you guys for um, this one for me on page that process. Okay, in the chat thread, I'm seeing from Calista, personal consistent growth. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Anybody else? Don't be shy. We're over computer. I can't fight you. For that one, I wrote down um, growth over the long haul because um, it's not an overnight thing. It is the skill. If leadership is a skill, then it can be developed. And skills have to be developed through practice <laughs> and through adding experience, right? And those things take time. Um, moving down to question four. What steps do you see other leaders in your organization taking in order to become better readers, better leaders, not readers, leaders. Leaders are readers, but let's not get confused here. It took time to think through that question and observe some things that leaders are doing in order to become better. Okay, Justin and Megan, reading this book. Yes, <laughs> for sure, for sure. From Melody's iPhone, asking themselves hard questions. Yes, learning about ourselves and asking ourselves questions, um, evaluating things, so, so important. From Jacqueline, keeping people in the loop. Yes, yes, communication is part of leadership. Listening, attending events, for sure, for sure. That was one of the ones I had written down. Facing fears, Melody, Julie, they're serving. Shannon, um, leading events, self-inspection, yes. Um, I forget if it was from a study or, or something uh, last year, but who we are is how we lead. Um, learning about ourselves is a huge, huge part of leadership because when we become aware of ourselves, of our strengths, of our weaknesses, then we learn how we can help, where we're strong, and also where we're weak and where we need to be growing. Okay, that was from Brene Brown. Um, from Natalie, doing the scary things and continuous personal growth. Yes, facing fears, definitely, and learning our strengths. Yeah, I had um, written down reading, um, listening, I think that's listening, so I can read my own writing, um, listening to trainings, listening to, or watching videos, those types of things, um, and listening to, to people, um, listening to the people on our team, listening to our, our mentors and coaches and, and other people who are doing well. Um, attending. 
<laughs> attending events as many as possible um, because that fills you up and raises that leadership lid um, and things. And one thing that Jessica Heffley shared with us at convention, pivoting, trying something, learning from it, making a slight adjustment when necessary. Um, because we learn, especially um, with Flexus, we learn in the doing. It's like riding a bike. You cannot read a book on riding a bike and learn it. You've got to hop on the bike. you got to push off. you got to pedal. And as you do, you, you learn. You start to develop those skills and you start to see places where you need to make small changes. Okay, I had two more questions. Mm -hmm. um, in the last year, what has contributed the most to your growth as a leader? How many of you have been doing this plexus thing for a year or more? A couple, Natalie has, you know, a couple of the others. Ellen, maybe. Did anyone think about this? and take the time to answer this question. I would love to hear um, what you guys came up with, what you felt has helped you, has contributed most to your growth as a leader over the last year. I would say for me personally, um, one of the biggest things that contributes to my growth is having uh, really good mentors that I can talk to um, that are nearby, that I can meet with like once a week or something. Um, I had two mentors before I hit college and then I had another mentor that kind of helped me through college. And both of those time periods were uh, a lot more growth for me because I had that other person that was walking with me and sharing with me and holding me more accountable. Excellent, really, really good mentorship and accountability. Great, great, great. Anybody else? Melody put in the comments, meeting leaders in Plexus and asking them questions. Questions, oh my goodness, questions are such a huge part of life. <laughs> huge part of relating to people, starting conversations, learning. Um, events have been huge. IPA challenges have helped me to learn what IPA needs to look like. Very, very good. So, yeah. Natalie in the chat here just said, realizing that I can develop these skills. I can pursue other dreams that seem too far out there feeling empowered. Excellent, excellent. Um, for me, um, I wrote down learning about myself. <laughs> um, that's been probably one of the, the biggest contributors for me in the last year. Um, learning areas where I have natural strengths and areas that are not instinctive or natural for me. Um, because once you're aware of them, then you can work on them. If you're not aware of them, then you can't work on them, right? <laughs> or you won't work on them because you're not aware. So, um, Shannon shared, IPA challenges push me out of comfort zones, getting better, learning my weaknesses and where I need to grow. Jacqueline said, watching the examples of others and what they do and developing existing relationships. And starting new ones. All oh, those are all things that yeah, can contribute to our our growth and our leadership skills. Um, the last question I wanted to tackle was number eight. It's on page thirty six in my book. How will you commit to learning in order to become a better leader? What resources will you subscribe to or buy? What conferences or training classes will you attend this year? Um, you don't necessarily have to answer that one out loud unless somebody wants to. Um, but, um, yeah, we have so many great, great resources. Um, let's 
see Justin Megan said, I want to attend the Dale Carnegie course. Ooh, that would be good. <laughs> that would be really good. I just um, read a book. I can't remember what I was reading. But it was some really, maybe it was Warren Buffett. Like the guy that has like 90 assets going for him. <laughs> um, 90 income stories. <laughs> yes, yes. He said that the the one certificate that he has on his wall in his office is his Dale Carnegie course. And that book was so good. I read it um, January, maybe two years ago. And I'm like, whoa, I could read this every single year. And I know my brother and my dad did his course. Um, you know, they drove every like Monday night for I don't know how long. But I, I feel like it would be really beneficial to, to go to one of those. So that's on my bucket list for 2020. <laughs> Yeah, Dale Carnegie, and I believe he wrote How to Win Friends and Influence People. Correct? Yes. Read it last year. It was fabulous. It was actually a really fun read. I don't know. I was expecting it to be really dry and dull. <laughs> I don't know why. But it was a great read. Really fun. Excellent. It's like The 21 Laws. It's one of those books that you could probably read every year and get totally new things out of it. So let's see. Do. Oh, Amber's reading it. Yay! Yes, definitely classic. Um, oh, this is good. Melody said, I don't know if you all are like this, but I have to remind myself that I'm worth developing, that traveling and learning are something that I'm worthy of, for lack of a better word. Lexus has been a huge vehicle for me to become more self confident. I'm still working on this aspect. Um, yes. The Lord has given us gifts and talents for a reason. They're for us to use, to discover, um, and to grow so that we can benefit others. When God gives us gifts, they're not for us. They're for us to use and to share and to bless and to be used by him. And yeah, we can't do that unless we're discovering what our gifts and talents are. Um, and working to grow them, seeking to apply them um, through his, his strength and by his direction. We were talking about this, I was talking about this this week with somebody, and it just made me think of that verse um, that says, For from him and through him and to him are all things. Our gifts, our talents, our strengths are from him. They're to be used through him, through the power of his spirit, and to him. To him goes the glory because we know that even strengths isn't saying that we're perfect. Acknowledging that we have strengths <laughs> isn't saying we're the best of the best. Just saying these are the gifts that the Lord has given me. I need his help to use them and therefore his glory. All righty. Um, before we move on to the law of navigation, did anyone have anything that popped out to them from this chapter? Um, I'm an underliner, <laughs> so if anyone else is an underliner, liner, did you have um, something that um, I would love to hear if I don't unmute myself too soon? One of my new questions is, what's your plan for personal growth? Or in other words, what book are you reading? Or, you know, what are you listening to? I thought that question that he got asked was really profound you know is do we have a plan because if we don't <laughs> we can't expect to grow you know one thing i'll say really quick on the very first page it says um if you want to see where someone develops into a champion look at his daily routine. And I'm in an accountability group <clears throat> with about six or seven other people. And Jessica Huffley challenged us this week to write down our Ailey, I'm sorry, Ailey, ideal AM and PM routine. And that was just really eye-opening. Cause I mean, I have in my brain, like my routine, but she said, and do it for five days in a row. And if you do, I'm gifting everyone 50 bucks, even herself, because <laughs> she said, this is a place that she really struggles in. And I, I'll say I do too. Like there's such 
freedom and like not having to get up and go to work. Um, and so that's been a challenge for me this week or, you know, I've been challenged to do that. Um, but I think, I just think back to John Maxwell say, saying the secret to success is your daily routine. And so that's where I'm at and what I'm working on this week, guys. <laughs> Yes, I don't know if anyone else has read The Slight Edge. I feel like, I don't know if I picked that up or we did the book study on it, but oh my goodness. So good. Daily habits. The little things over time are what changes and what um, shape us into who we are and, yeah, and give us success. Anybody else? I just want to chime in for a second, if that's okay. Let's see. Can you hear me? Okay. <laughs> um, I'm just going to say, um, Megan saying that she had to write down her morning and nighttime routine. We were in this um, parenting small group and they had to make us, they did a, a pie chart. We had to make a list of all the, this is mostly about our children, but um, just looking at the pie chart of how you spend your time every day. And I looked at it and I went, oh my gosh, I have so much wasted time where I just fill it with nonsense. Like I just, for me, like there's so, I could be so much more effective if I just wrote down and made myself do the things at a given time. And I just waste so much time during the day. So I'm going to try to be more efficient at that and do the things I'm supposed to do when I'm supposed to do them. And when I think of them, because otherwise it takes a week to get anything done. <laughs> so that is my the thing I'm trying to work on um, is just trying to schedule it out and stick to it and don't be such a time waster. So when they had you do the pie charts, do they have you map out for each kid or how did that work? In the class, um, we just did it for one kid because we only have like a little over an hour. And um, so we did, we wrote down everything that um, it was really for our child, everything that our child does in the day. Um, cause this, we were focusing on them. And then the next pie chart was how much money do you give for each thing that they do? And the things that they do the most, we found out that we don't even spend that much money on. It was like family time and, and school. Um, we spend money on that cause we homeschool, you know, but, um, yeah, that's how we did. And you're supposed to do it for each child just to kind of see where your attention goes and where your money goes and things like that. Okay. Yeah. That's really good. Super, super practical. And now that you know, now you can work on it. <laughs> right. Knowing, knowing is a thing. Knowing is the thing, right. <laughs> right. That's right. Knowing is the thing. Mm -hmm. Then we can move forward. Anybody else? Yeah, one of the pieces that really stuck out to me, um, I guess it's under... I don't know if it shows up in your book. It's phase three in my book. Um, I know what I don't know. Um, and John Maxwell talks about um, about the same time that he got into a, like a, a program that was run by Kurt Kampmeyer of Success Motivation. Um, and he was doing that program. He got another idea to write to like the top 10 leaders in his field and he offered them a hundred dollars for a half hour of their time just to ask them questions. And like, that's some pretty good dedication to trying to learn from people that know more than you do to be like, I'm going to pay you just to answer my questions. Like I value your time and your input that much. And I know you're busy. And I think that was just really cool to me to see that. Um, and just trying to think through like, who would I, ask those questions too and who do I need to go to and you know try and get some some training from I think the awareness to ask the questions because I know when I started I kind of had this imposter syndrome like well who am I to go ask Jessica Heffley questions or Tamara Holloway or these people and but like John Maxwell John Maxwell actually had the awareness to know that he was worth like I guess because he knew he wanted to know what those people knew and he valued himself enough to put himself out there and just say hey I'll pay you for your time can you 
Can I have 30 minutes of your time? So I love the fact that he had the awareness to ask for it, not just think, oh man, I wish I could like, you know, bend their ear for 30 minutes. Um, and he went and did that. I don't know. That was just kind of a light bulb moment when you shared that. Um, so don't be, don't ever be afraid to ask questions or feel like, like that, like I did, <laughs> like, who am I to be asking so-and-so a question, you know? So good things. That's the, one of the amazing things about Plexus is we don't even have to pay him a hundred dollars <laughs> for the time. <laughs> We've got like, loads of trainings on team pages and things that we can search and then um, people that we know that we're connected to who um, who are happy who are eager um, to help us and to, to answer questions and help us love 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 the culture All right. Anything else? Okay, well, it's about 8.30. So, law of process. It's going to take time to get there, and it is worth, <laughs> worth starting that process, worth paying the price, um, worth growing and developing. Law of navigation. Anyone can steer the ship, but it takes a leader to chart the course. Um, we must learn the importance of law of navigation. Be willing to navigate a course for your followers. Um, this is something that I know just continues to, to stand out more and more um, once you have <laughs> somebody join you. Or a couple of people join you and that that weight <laughs> of oh I've got these people following me I want to take care of them well um, he shared some stories um, contrasting um, two different leaders one who prepared who thought through who navigated who really put in the time to care for his people well um, and succeeded in his mission the other one who didn't and since it's Arctic or and Arctic explorers, of course, they all died. <laughs> in the end, thank goodness we can learn leadership in an area where it's not do or die, live or <laughs> sink or swim. Uh, we can uh, we can take our failures and we can learn from them, and nobody dies in the process. Yay! So. Uh, yes, followers need leaders who are able to effectively navigate for them. Um, one thing that I underlined um, from the, the bad example of leadership um, was that um, this particular leader um, was oblivious to their plight. Um, he was not in tune with his people, um, with their needs, with where they were at. Um, yeah, so leaders always have in mind that other people on, are depending on them and their ability to chart a good course. Doesn't mean we won't ever make mistakes. Doesn't mean we won't ever need to tweak and change the things. Um, but yeah, we want to be we want to be setting a course, thinking it through, and going through the process of getting. Um, giving our, our, our best chance of success to the goals and to the objectives um, that we have in mind. And finding out the goals and objectives of, of the people um, that we're leading and how we can help them chart a road and a path to success. Um, so this year, my family took a trip out east and we stopped at the Gettysburg Battlefield. Um, with the museum there, we chased around, we had to go to a little round top. Um, we came back home and Kyle and I were like, okay, Gettysburg, we've got to watch the movie. <laughs> it was one that my folks had. Um, hadn't seen it for a good while, so we got it from the library and we um, actually popped it in and got halfway through um, over the weekend. And oh my goodness, I have not seen that movie for a number of years. 
and Ben and Plexus for three years, and I was like, oh my goodness, this movie is all about leadership. It was fascinating. It was like a whole, watching a whole new movie, watching um, these different generals as they're communicating with each other. What did you see? What have you learned about the enemy? How's the morale of your troops? What's the layout of are we on good ground? Are we on better? Can we take better ground? Um, each of them communicating down to their, as you, you break the army down into smaller and smaller components. Um, different leaders uh, having successes, different leaders failing to be encouraged. Um, listening to, to ideas from, from different um, ranks and talking through them with the plan. It was just absolutely fascinating. Because this was well, this was before <laughs> cell phones and photos and all of those things, and so they were constantly talking to their to their um, people and listening and um, brainstorming together and explaining it. It was just it was very very interesting to watch with a whole new set of eyes and observe the leadership. And again, um, thank goodness we are not in a <laughs> leadership positions where it's life and death um, like they were we don't have thousands of um, men about to die if we we make the wrong decisions and, and don't go through this process which is lovely I can't imagine pressure but um, there are things that we can do to navigate um, successfully I thought the things that he pointed out were great navigators draw on past experience that's where the law of the process comes in the things that you are experiencing now and dealing with now and struggling through now and doing little victories in now, these are the things that you're going to be drawing on um, farther down the road. Every past success and failure can be a source of information and wisdom. Successes, I'm on page 43 in my book, um, under Navigators Drawn Past Experience. Successes teach you about yourself, what you're capable of doing, your particular gifts and talents. Failures show you what kinds of wrong assumptions you've made, where your methods are flawed. If you fail to learn from your mistakes, you're going to fail again and again. If you learn from your mistakes, you can pivot, you can make those small changes, and you can chart a better course next time. Um, navigators listen to what others have to say. Um, as I was reading his paragraph here, I saw him. Um, listening to and drawing on three groups of people. Um, number one, they get ideas from members of their leadership team. So other people who can, um, you know, bounce ideas back and forth. Other people who are capable leaders who can really help um, to evaluate. Two, they talk to people in their organizations and find out what's happening on the grassroots level. That's like the, the generals when they were assessing What's the, what's the morale of the troops? How are they doing? Um, are, they, are they in good spirits? Are they ready for this, this next step of battle? Um, and three, they spend leader, the time with leaders from outside the organization who can mentor them. Um, you know, like Callista mentioned, mentorship um, is, a, is a big part of the process and a big part of growing, finding people who are, who are wise and have integrity um, and can help us. So to navigate, we draw on past experience. We listen to what others have to say. Navigators examine the conditions before making commitments. Um, he said in that paragraph, and I underlined, before I make commitments that are going to impact my people, I take stock and thoroughly think, think, think things through. Count the cost before making commitments for ourselves um, and for others. There again, um, awareness of, of yourself um, and awareness of your troops, we'll say, <laughs> that's making decisions um, within your family, uh, within your business, um, so many different areas of life where we are um, leaders to a certain extent. We need to be, to be aware of where we're at, where our seasons of life are at. Um, yeah, just all those things, what are, what are the conditions? And navigators make sure their conclusions represent both faith and fact. Um, to move 
before, there's there's like a delicate a delicate balance because facts are only part of the picture, right? <laughs> it only shows us so much. It shows us what we have, um, but it doesn't necessarily show us what we're all capable of achieving because oftentimes, um, especially when you have a team of people working, you can go way beyond what the facts would indicate, right? Um, some things I had underlined from there was that a leader has to possess a positive attitude. You have to have faith that you can take your people all away or else you won't even start <laughs> on the journey. Um, on the other hand, you do have to be able to see the facts realistically. You can't minimize obstacles or rationalize your challenges. Um, we have obstacles and it's good to, to look at them um, head on and not, not minimize them to be aware of the challenges um, so that we can um, come up with a plan to move beyond them. Um, I like the quote, realistic leaders are objective enough to minimize illusions. They understand that self-deception can cost them their vision, but they still have a vision. They still have big dreams and places that they're going. So there's that, that balance. Okay, once again, there was the evaluate section. I'm really liking those. I think those are really helpful. So what is um, to the, the discuss and apply part of the section? I like this question. What is the process you should go through in order to successfully navigate your team? What came to mind for folks there? That question catch y'all off guard. Um, some things that I wrote down were setting the next goals, um, drawing on past experience, assessing um, where your team or where your group is at, um, charting action steps, getting buy-in, getting everyone on the same page, getting everyone on board, and inspiring action. Um, did anyone have any other thoughts to add to that one? Which question was it, Gretchen? Um, in my book, it's on page 47. It's under discuss. Some people's books say apply. And it's question one. What is the process you should go through? in order to successfully navigate your team. It's funny because I've gone through this book a couple times and so it's fun to read my answers from before. Um, I have two answers in different ink. So the first time I read through it, I said we have to, or I have to look forward and I have to look backward. And then more recently I put listen to others. I think both of those, those are important because a lot of times I'm thinking like the month before what worked what didn't or you know the past six months what's been working do we want to change it up going forward for the next 90 days I'm constantly thinking through questions like that in terms of like what events I'm hosting or things like that and then I'm also really curious to what people are saying like if they're like well my words too much stuff or um, hey, we need we need uh, more information about we need more product information on the team page. Or hey, um, is Justin hosting some sort of guy event? You know, there's more guys and we want to get them engaged. So I think I really value listening to the team to help me know, you know, like what's next. You know, so those are two things that have been helpful for me learning how to navigate. <laughs> Oops, you're muted. <laughs> but you can tell by my hands I was talking, right? <laughs> I was just saying that, you know, this applies to, to so many areas um, of life. Just, you know, thinking through these things as a mom and as 
um, a homeschooler and you know how we go about shifting and adjusting for different seasons of life, taking into account um, where our kids are at, are at their learning styles. Uh, there's just so much, so much a um, application to all of these laws um, in so many areas of life. It's really good. Okay, um, question number four. Um, that was page 47 in my book. It's just said it's 39 in her workbook. So this would be on page 48 or possibly page 40, depending on which version you got. Um, question number four, how do you choose who to run your ideas by before implementing them? Anyone have any thoughts there? ones that came to mind for me were um, people with more experience than me. Uh, people who, who have uh, some insights to share and people affected. Um, people uh, on one hand to, to make sure we're all on the same, same page, we're ready to, to move together to get buy-in, but also for improvements um, because oftentimes the, the people on the team, people being led um, will have a different perspective and we'll see things that could be tweaked or done better or um, were effective or weren't effective. Um, another group of people, <laughs> but I thought just depending on the areas. Um, yeah, sometimes family. <laughs> My family, um, we talked about you know, different times about having shareholders meetings um, when you're in flexes to make sure that Everything is is working in in harmony as far as where your hubby's at, where your kids are at, and all that. Kind of thing. Close to this, yes. Um, let's see. In the comments, Jacqueline said, "Someone who is honest and trustworthy that can speak from life or from experience." Yes, excellent, excellent. Um, Shannon, someone who's more successful than me. Yeah, I had that one down too. Um, Calista, typically, I would go to someone who has proven they have a sound character plenty of life experience and who live in a way that, that honors God. Yes, people, people of um, integrity, experience, honest, trustworthy. Yeah, very good. Um, skipping down to question number seven, as a leader, what steps will you take to ensure that your team will be well prepared to take on its next project or challenge? We're at the beginning of the month, November, Thinking about goals, thinking about the end of the year, um, setting ourselves up for January, which is huge. Um, Black Friday is coming up. Um, but there's often some, some specials and stuff. So um, yeah, what steps can we take that will help us all to be prepared? If you have something on that, feel free um, to chime in. But whether you wrote something in or not, it's a good, good thing to think through. Um, a couple of things that I had written down were to, to check on, on my leader's goals um, and to make the vision, make the vision plain um, of where we're headed. Let's see, Jacqueline wrote in the chat, keep them informed, encouraging them to participate in events. Yes, yes, yes. good things one of the things that i've been thinking through is like having a plan before it's like time to put it out there <laughs> so like taking time to map out like the next 90 days has been really helpful for me um, that way i kind of know what's coming the next three months and then i can get the word out sooner because I, I feel like sometimes i don't get it out to like right when it's happening <laughs> and then i feel like there's less participation a lot of times because they're they're just you know, just because you put it once in a chat thread or once on the team page or whatever, not everyone's going to see that. So <clears throat> I know Jessica always says, repeat, repeat, repeat. We just have to keep, you know, going over the basics, going over the fundamentals. And when there is an event or, um, you know, that kind of thing to just repeat, <laughs> repeat ourselves and 
Also, private messaging <clears throat> is so much more effective than a post on Facebook or a story or a post on your team page or in a chat thread because it it's personal to them, you know. So those are a couple of things that I'm working on being better at in that area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was helpful for me even just to to look at the November calendar and go, oh yes, Black Friday's coming. Usually something happens Black Friday. My folks need to know that because not everyone was around last year to know that dig in, plant seeds, and start thinking about who are you going to touch back with when when Black Friday happens. And oftentimes they will surprise us with something lovely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, Jacqueline just said. Um, yeah, telling people early and often. <laughs> oh, very good. So, um, did anyone have, um, if you're one of my underliners, or um, have an aha moment from the chapter, um, something that, that you want to share that you underlined or that um, really for you or encouraged you? I probably had too many aha moments, so I will try not to cover too much. Um, one of the really big parts that stood out to me was um, where it's talking about um, you, you have to have the faith and the facts and that balance between those. Um, because I, I tend to have a lot of like dreams, but then I don't necessarily have the positive attitude of this is actually able to happen in real life. And so those, those ideas and those dreams don't connect with an action plan because I haven't worked on practicing that attitude of this is possible. I can do this. You know, it, it takes the repetition of these habits that build up towards that success. Um, so that's been kind of something that I'm having to wrestle with, I guess. I'm reading this book and Gretchen, when you were talking about, the same thing as Callista about um, faith, you know, believing something essentially before you see it in person, right? And then the facts like, okay, well, we know these are the obstacles or these are the fears or these are the, so I'm reading this book as part of that other accountability group. It's called Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. Um, and it's just, ta it's talking about, you know, the way people think, and it's really, it's really been fascinating. Um, I mean, you can substitute millionaire with successful, right? <laughs> but this was really phenomenal. I found the the spot where it was. He said, um, "Let me see. I got some context here." The reality is that most people do not reach their full potential. Most people are not successful. Research so shows that eighty percent of individuals never will never be financially free in the way that we they would like to be, and eighty percent will never claim to be truly happy. And he says the reason is simple. Don't get don't get offended by this. Just like hear hear it out. It's interesting. He says most people are unconscious. They're a little asleep at the wheel. They work and think on a superficial level of life based only on what they can see. They live strictly in the visible world. And so, and I put next to that, what could be, and it's interesting because he said, we don't live on one plane of existence. We live in at least four different realms at once. And then he gives this little quadrant. And I thought this was interesting because I've, um, this completely ties into what we do in Plexus, like with, with health, like from a physical standpoint. Um, but he said the four quadrants are the physical world, the mental world, the emotional world, and the spiritual world. And what people, most people never realize is that the physical realm is merely, merely a printout of the other three. And so I, I just thought it was really interesting <laughs> that, um, like Brooke Hemingway says, that this business takes faith. It takes a lot of faith because we have to be able to see what could be, right, before it actually happens. Um, and I'm just chiming in some extras of what I'm learning from another book. Calista with what you were sharing about faith versus facts. And then Gretchen, you were talking about, it's that balance, that, that tension between um, 
what we can see, like what we can see in the future, like, oh my word, this, this could be. And then we have the, the obstacles and the, the fears and, the, and those things. So yeah, that, I just thought that really resonated with me when you guys were talking about that. And somebody recently, I have no idea who, <laughs> I've been to leaders retreat. I've heard a lot of stuff recently, but somebody was talking about um, how do we get from here to there? How do we get from the facts of where we're at now to the faith of where those dreams are? And it's some baby steps. It's little steps. It's little daily consistent actions. It's taking those thoughts captive one by one. It's addressing those fears. It's confronting those lies, with the truth of God's word. Um, it's in the little daily steps. And I was so encouraged. Okay, I think that was Brooke Hemingway at Leaders Retreat. Um, but I just found that um, really, really helpful because sometimes our dreams are really big and we see where we're at and we're really not there. <laughs> And just to be encouraged that it is in the small things, in the daily things, the little choices, the little steps day by day that will add up, that move us slowly. But I love the, the law of process. It takes us through that process of becoming um, who the Lord wants us to be. Yes, we can all do baby steps. Yes, yes, yes. Nobody jumps. There are, no, there are no quantum leaps into herohood, success, leadership, or anything like that, unless you're watching Superman movies or, I don't know. <laughs> yes, the boring things to move the needle forward. Absolutely, absolutely. Any other standouts, ahas, that anyone wants to share before we wrap it up here? One thing that he also goes on to say is that basically what you see externally is really a reflection on, of what's internal. And sometimes I think we, we look at people and are like, whoa, well, well they are make, they've made quantum leaps. Brooke Hemingway, she went diamond in a year. Jessica Heffley went emerald in eight months and diamond in 11. Like those people look like they're making these quantum leaps but what we don't see is like the under underground like what's in them as a person the relationships they develop the influence that they've built over the years um their mindset uh which maybe is ginormous like which it has to be to in order to go that fast so quickly and they have to and you have to put in a lot of time <laughs> to do that so quickly but I feel like a lot of us will just look at those people and be like, well, they're just a freak of nature. These, you know, that, who does that happen to that? They just got lucky, but really it's because they had a lot under the surface that was already there, you know, in their mindset and their work ethic and their disciplines and their relationships in so many areas. So, um, yeah, it's just, an, it's just interesting, right? It's, it's such a learning curve and, um good things and i think the encouraging thing is that all of us can learn the skill set all of us can be better leaders um we can learn from each other right and my cool thing is we have access like gretchen was sharing something that brooke said I, and brooke is so encouraging because she makes it so doable someone that's so successful sometimes they're not relatable <laughs> to other people, but she, I think she's so successful because she breaks down the steps. Speaking of law of process, that girl has, has systems <laughs> and that is a huge reason why she's successful because that has duplicated down into her team. And then the way she shares things, she breaks it down into little chunks, little baby steps. And people, when they hear those things, they say, you know what? I can do that too. I can do a baby step. I can do a baby step today. I can do a baby step tomorrow. And just in basically empowering people to know that they can they can do the things you know yeah good stuff yeah 
And we said, don't don't compare your chapter two with somebody else's chapter twenty seven. All right, so leadership is a skill. It's a skill that can be developed over time through a process. And as we're developing that skill, uh, we want to be good at growing in our navigation um, so that it will be a blessing to, to our followers, <laughs> to whoever we're influencing, whatever, whatever word you want to, to use there. So, excellent, excellent. Um, yeah, we have something pressing, pop it in the, the comment thread, or the chat thread, or just unmute here and stop me. Um, otherwise, we have some intriguing stuff coming up. The law of EF button. I read this before, but um, yeah, obviously we're going to have to <laughs> read it again. Remember what that one was. Wow. Jacqueline just said, doing those baby steps also builds our confidence, which increases our motivation and enthusiasm, upward positive spiral. Yes. Getting little, getting little victories under our belts. Um, is huge towards moving ourselves forward. I believe Amy Booker has next week. I'll confirm that. But law of addition and the law of solid ground. So that will be for next Monday. Okay, we'll look in your book because yeah. I think maybe I have an older. Older. Mine might mine might be older actually. I haven't updated my book. <laughs> if you anyway, have... there are two great laws coming next week. <laughs> yes. I'll just put a plug in really quick. Thursday night is the men's event. So girls can be on that, by the way. So don't feel like you can't be on it if you're not a guy. But we're just having it where it's all guy testimony, it's all live, kind of like we did last month with the, with the women's event. It was basically in two parts. The guy event is gonna be this Thursday, it'll be live. And then in two weeks, the part two will just be an, I think an hour worth of product information, guy testimonials and stuff like that. And it'll be hosted in the same group. And then we'll be a standalone resource once, once we're done with that. And I'm co-hosting, or well, actually Justin is. <laughs> Justin's hosting Thursday night, but Ryan Evans is also going to be, um, we're doing as a team event with her team also. So that's coming up. Tomorrow is the new ambassador training at nine. I believe Gretchen's doing the lunch and learn. <laughs> if that works for you, Gretchen, if, it, if not, um, <laughs> you might bump it. <laughs> um, but then there's the team call tomorrow night. So Tuesdays are kind of, kind of a heavy day on the very first Tuesday of the month, but that's coming up Tuesday. And then next week is that sip and glow challenge. So I'm encouraging people to plug into the IPA challenge this week so that we can prepare for Thursday and for next week. Mm -hmm. So if you are uncomfortable reaching out to guys, this is the day, this is the week to go through your entire Facebook list <laughs> and get all those guys checked out. Exactly. Yes, yes. Invite them to the group. Easy, easy. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for popping on. This has been fabulous. Cannot wait for next week. Yes. Have a lovely week. Bye.